We know that companies are struggling to define a scalable, high-quality, governed data architecture of Gen AI, as we've been talking about. But most are focusing on using RAG, uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation, to increase the quality um, or fine-tuning to great models that generate more accurate answers. Uh, we've talked about semantics, but what do you think? Is there a, a way that we can give executives who want to deploy new Gen AI applications, but don't want the thing to hallucinate? They don't want to, people to get different answers each time they go to a chat bot and ask the same question, which is happens a lot. What, what do you think is is the way to to address this situation? Well, so um, Gen AI is focused uh, mainly on unstructured data, and there's a very good reason for that, which is that um, all the systems that we talk about with respect to Gen AI involve pattern recognition and then response to recognized patterns by generating um, results that make sense with respect to what's in the large language model, which was built in the first place in order to uh, harness those patterns and the, and the information that they provide us by large scale correlations uh, to answer questions. And uh, the reason they can do that is because they're based on um, they're based on uh, human language and human language has semantics and semantics uh, provide a certain sort of order to the way words are arranged. In other words, if you had a large language model and all the data that came in was just random words, then it wouldn't be able to do anything with it. But they're not. They're in sentences, they're in paragraphs, and those structures form patterns that can be broken down. There are no semantic structures. Structured, structured data has no semantics whatsoever. It's just values. The value in a relational database are organized according to tables with rows and columns. And those tables tell you nothing about what the data really means, tells you nothing about what the data means in reference to other data. There's there's nothing there. It has that all has that work has to be done. And if that work isn't done, then you can't really incorporate that data into uh, a an AI super system, if you will. I mean, yes, you can you can generate SQL. You can ask a bunch of questions and have a have a SQL statement pop out that you apply against your database and get values. Um, but you can't actually have it analyze the data in the relational database unless it has more information than is currently present. That's why I kept harping on the idea of a, of a graph, a property graph, as the means of collecting sufficient um, information in order to allow that to happen. Because two things need to be added to the system in order for this all to work. One is the definition of the data itself in business terms, so that those can be related to other business terms and so forth. The other is context. This means this when this is happening. This means this in relation to that. You know, that kind of stuff also has to be there. The more of that richness that you can provide the system, then the more intelligent your response is going to be and the more able you will be to integrate stuff. Now, we've had these challenges for years, but we didn't have it with respect to AI. We were just trying to do things like design better data systems or make our applications more efficient. And at the end of the day, we often sort of failed, right? And the reason we failed was because Operational application systems are developed by individual projects with individual project leaders and individual goals, the first of which is to make the application come online as fast as possible and do the narrowly defined set of things that it's designed to do, period. So they're not interested in, does this data make sense in any other context? They're not interested in... What? You know, does you know do the values that I use in this in this application relate in any way to the values that any other application uses? Then we counter encounter that problem when, as I'm sure Richard can give us plenty of uh, examples, we try to blend stuff together to put it in a data warehouse because uh, we have to solve some of those problems. What we do is punt. We we select the applications that we want to use for the. Um, for the data warehouse and we collect the data in the applications that we want to use for the data warehouse so that we can simplify the problem to the point where we can get it working. And we still have a rat's nest of ETL jobs and things like this transforming the data with no real guidance over the top so that when things change, we have to go back manually and, and fix them. That is not a prescription for AI success. What you really need is for the data to be well understood. And, and now that we are at a point where AI is attracting enough attention that people are saying, oh, there could be real value in my simply being able to 
you know, do, as I like to say over and over again, what you could do with Star Trek, right? You just ask the computer a question that gives you an answer and it's an unambiguous right answer. That's what we want. So to your, your question about um, hallucinations and such, Wayne, those happen because human language can be inconsistent and the patterns can be misleading and cause, cause wrong answers to pop out. Um, databases are always consistent if they're managed well. But they're not necess- they don't necessarily relate to each other or to the real world of business. So that's the part that we have to fill in. And that's that's the big challenge. If we can do it, we you know, we can make it happen. So it may be that finally senior management will say, actually, we should allocate some resources over the course of, you know, years or even a decade or so to fix this problem and make the data match and fit together so that we can ask those kinds of questions on a day-by-day basis and get really good, consistent, comprehensive answers. Well, Carl, that was quite elephant. I have never heard anyone describe uh, how that all fits together like you just did, but you're, you're obviously talking to Andreas's uh, language. And I'm wondering if Andreas, you have any comments on that or Carl, how would you actually go about implementing, I, I think what you're talking about is semantics on top of all of our data. So there is that richness there that we can use to analyze. Well, yeah, before I, Andre- I let Andreas answer your question, I just want to point out that another thing that's going on in the AI world is AI-assisted tools. And those can be a big help in uh, identifying you know, how we relate data together at a semantic level. If we had to do it manually just by having committees meet in a room with big whiteboards and draw everything out with arrows, it would take forever. And it would be, a, you know, people would be arguing and having fights and, you know, erasers at each other and stuff like that. But if an, uh, an AI-assisted tool helping you do the work, it can come out uh, much better. I, I agree with you, Carl, uh, except one element. I would not let the AI do everything from scratch. Um, it's good to have people still involved to lay the foundation. Uh, hey, remember that we said AI assisted. I didn't mean yeah. AI given or controlled. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. But the, the majority of the graph should be generated automatically, uh, probably 99%. And it can be done because we have a lot of elements to it. I mean, all the work we've done in the in the past decades uh, is now valuable. It can uh, fill the knowledge graph with the right information, but we have to bring it together in, in one kind of unified views over all the silos and also to translate the, let's say, the, the data logics into business logics language. And the best case is even in natural language. Because what we've built as data models for a particular application uh, was optimized towards one particular yeah goal. But now, if we want to have all the data and and facts and 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 context uh, flying around in the different repositories and silos uh, put into one structure, um, obviously we need to um, use more the business or the domain specific language. Um, which can be understood by the by the subject matter expert. So those are the, the drivers. And what we uh, currently see is really a, a strong need to have new roles in 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 the in the play in place, which um, kind of can bridge also the let's say the the data scientists, the data engineers' perspective, and the uh, subject matter experts on the on the other side. So those have to be connected also to some degree. They, they speak different languages. They look at data in different ways, uh, and those models which which bridge the gap yeah, need to be governed in in a, in a, in a way that th- this can be brought together. We start talking about knowledge stewards. Uh, I don't know if that resonates with you. We all know what data stewards are doing. Uh, knowledge stewards are those who understand the people, uh, their their business needs, and also understand the the data uh, under the hood and try to bridge that uh, with uh, so-called domain models, which could be yeah, a graph, uh, a part of the larger graph, and the rest around those little uh, knowledge models can be generated quite automatically. As said before, 99% of the, of the facts and, and triples in a knowledge graph can be, can be generated automatically with help from LLMs and with other transformation tasks and machine learning in place. Can I add one more thing? I just felt like a critical. 
in terms of, you know, the executives or our teammates, right? AI is basically, especially Gen AI, is a predictive kind of engine, right? There's no 100% accuracy, for sure, regardless of what we do. So that expectation needs to be adjusted, right? And then, then you know, we have a mixture of structured data, high-quality data, and the reliable API to s- supplement the results of that. So I think that, that understanding needs to be adjusted in the industry as well. 